Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's February 13th, 2013. I'm Logan Burgess. To my right here is Brock Shimano. Well, Brock, let's jump into fire tips, see how the grains traded on a Wednesday. As we can see, we had corn once again closing in the red, down a penny and three quarters for the March contract. Soybeans picking up a little bit of ground. We had the March contract trading up three cents. Chicago wheat was up three cents. Kansas City wheat up two cents. Guys, if you want live quotes at your home or office, you can visit us over at grainhedge.com. Take a no obligation demo of the platform that you see in front of you right now. Uh, but Brock, kind of let's jump into corn here first off. Nine straight days closing in the red here. We did find a little bit of support. Uh, do, do you kind of see a bottom nearing in this corn market, or, or what's your outlook on things? You know, Logan, you're, you're right on there. Nine straight days of selling, but if you were to put a positive spin on the market today, yeah. we did finish well off the low. So I think that is something positive to take into tomorrow's session. Similar story for soybeans. We did sell off, sell off sharply into the overnight session. We were down to 1404, but we finished right. almost 20 cents above the low of the overnight. And then for wheat and Kansas City wheat as well, we both en ended up both positive there after being off sharply in the overnight session as well. Yep. So if you want to put a, a little bit of a positive spin on the trade today, we did end up off the lows on most of those contracts here. Um, but for corn, you know, I think we could still potentially go back down and test that 680 level. There's not a whole lot of demand out there to drive this higher. I think yep. $7 provided resistance again today. Yep. So I think that's going to continue to be a battleground right underneath that $7 level. Yeah, Brock, you know, technically right now this corn chart looks pretty darn weak. It certainly looks like we could revisit uh, 640, or excuse me, 680 on that contract. The one uh, piece of fundamental news that we did have out today was those EIA ethanol production numbers. Uh, production was up 15,000 barrels on the week, up to 789,000 barrels. And if we plug that into the model here that we've been watching throughout the marketing year, as you can see, coming in line pretty much with our grain hedge forecast here, that's the green line. The blue line there is last year's production, and the red line, or the red histogram bars here, are the weekly production data. So, you know, as I said, fundamentally, it's seems like it did lend a little bit of support today just because we did see an, an uptick in production and over the last week we've seen ethanol crush margins improve so that certainly does uh, bode well for production here moving forward but the big thing to keep in mind is that we still have a pretty large gap to fill uh, in our minds with ethanol production compared to where the USDA uh, sees it coming uh, sees it ending up at the end of the marketing year I guess bottom line here the USDA is expecting 4.5 billion bushels of corn to go to ethanol production our models based off the ethanol crush margins indicate about 4.4 million a billion bushels going to ethanol production this year. So on net, about 100 million bushels overstated there. Certainly we're gonna have to keep an eye on it uh, moving forward here. You know, if you take a step back and look over this for the whole marketing year, yeah. looks like we're supposed to have a slight uptick as we head out through into the summer. Right. You know, there's a couple things to keep in mind there. We have seen crush margins get a little bit better over the last few weeks, yeah. uh, but we're also heading into the driving season, so we should see a pickup of the, of the blenders using ethanol. And then we also see uh, crude oil rallying over the last couple of weeks as well. So right. I think there's, you know, starting to be a little bit more of a bullish story heading for, uh, for ethanol heading into the yeah. summer. Uh, we'll definitely have to keep our eyes on it, and we'll be reporting on it every week. Yeah, absolutely. Breaking down those numbers for you. I know, Brock, we do have the export sales report out tomorrow. Certainly corn uh, has really struggled to get export sales here throughout the marketing year, while beans has had uh, re a really strong showing on the export sales front. Are we uh, are we expecting anything different out of tomorrow's report? You know, the expectations for tomorrow are for wheat to come in at 275 to 400,000 metric tons, uh, corn to be 150 to 350,000 metric tons, and soybeans to be 700 to 1.1 million metric tons. Uh, so it's Looks like a similar story that we've seen right. all marketing year long. Pretty slow export sales for, for corn and pretty good export sales for soybeans. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll be reporting on that on Twitter tomorrow when the export sales report comes out. Uh, at Grain TV is where you can find us over there. And then Friday, a big fundamental driver that we're going to be having is the NOPRA cr crush numbers. Certainly, we're going to be watching those closely after the USDA revised uh, expected soybean crush in the last WASD report. So we'll be reporting on both of those live on Twitter. As I said, at Grain TV is where you can find us over there. But you know, in general, Brock, I think that wraps up kind of what we saw in the grain market today. Thanks a lot for joining us here on Grain TV, guys. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow morning for the export sales report.